My name is uh, Mr. Klein. I'm the music teacher at Albert Einstein Middle School. Um, a lot of the sixth graders, sixth graders will recognize me because uh, I used to come in and teach ukulele to the fifth grade. Um, <clears throat> so I run the band program as well at Albert Einstein. And this is an after school program that we have for students to give them an opportunity to learn to play a band instrument. Um, so a band instrument is going to be a flute, clarinet, saxophone, trumpet, trombone, and percussion. Those are the instruments that we're going to be offering for band this year. Um, and I'm just going to go ahead and, and go through some info here. I'm going to start off, we're going to go through our band handbook a little bit just to give you a better idea of some of our um, uh, norms and, and kind of uh, the information that we want to get out through here. So um, I'll put this, I'll put a link to this in the chat so you can check this out as well. Um, if you wanna read through this on your own time. So here, I'll put a link there in the chat. So this is a Google Doc. So this is our, our handbook you can read through. So basically what is band? Band is a group of student musicians who rehearse and perform instrumental music together. A concert band is usually under the direction of one or more conductors or band directors. And a school band consists of woodwind instruments, brass instruments, and percussion instruments. So some skills that you'll develop through playing in band one is the ability to read music. I know some of you probably, you know, if you take piano lessons or something like that, maybe you already know how to read music, but this is gonna enhance your skills even further. Some of you have never played an instrument at all. So this is gonna get you up to speed and give you the ability to read music, which is a really important uh, skill to have when playing an instrument. You're gonna get the ability to perform uh, music on an instrument. Um, You'll develop time management skills, social and collaborative skills, stress management skills, literacy skills, goal, goal reaching skills, creativity, and most importantly, uh, playing in band and playing music is fun. So you're gonna have fun when you're in band. <laughs> so keep going along here. So here's a couple essential agreements uh, for band. So if you decide to sign up, this is just a couple things you can read over this. In order to sign up, um, you'll have to read through this band handbook before you can sign up. That's part of the, the agreement there. But I'll just read through a couple of these. So all group lessons, rehearsals, and performances are mandatory. Please be on time. Please be prepared. Be respectful to yourself, other students, teachers, the school, and to your instrument. Um, no food, drinks, or gum during rehearsal. We don't want to damage our instruments by eating um, while we're playing or before we're playing. So I'll, I'll get into some of that stuff uh, once we start learning to play the instruments. Um, give your best effort. Um, all school policies will be followed and enforced during band. Check your emails regularly for updates on performances and events, okay? So I'm gonna give you guys a quick uh, look at what band would have looked like last year when we were meeting in person. Um, I have a couple of photos here. Just This is just from some band pictures from last year. This top one is our, our performance. Uh, we performed in Balboa Park um, at the Casa del Prado Theater. Um, here's some shots from band class. So this is what this is what band looked like last year when we were meeting in the classroom. These are some of the band tryouts that we had last year when people were trying out instruments and testing them out. A few more shots from our um, from our concert and from class. So that's kind of an idea of what what band would have looked like uh, last year. But this year, since we're doing distance learning, um, I'll give you an idea a little bit more of of what it would look like because this is what we did at the end of last year. Um, all of our students got together on online and recorded their music, sent it to me, and we put together this, this full piece of music. So I'm going to play this for you so you can check this out to hear what it sounds like. Um, so this is what we did through distance learning last year in band.
right. So hopefully you guys are able to hear that. Dave, Jeff, could you, were you guys able to hear that? Okay, cool. Um, so yeah, that's what we did last year. I had all the students record their parts. It ended up being pretty cool to have that piece of music together and have a recording. Um, so basically this, um, this semester while we're doing distance, you guys are gonna have group lessons. So whatever instrument you end up picking to play, you'll be in a group with other people that play that instrument. And you'll have one lesson every week with myself or with uh, one of our two coaches. Um, I don't think they've joined the meeting yet, but if they pop in here, they'll, they'll introduce themselves. But we have um, Mr. Paldrell is uh, one of our coaches that helps out with woodwinds. And Mr. Yakub is our percussion assistant. So hopefully they'll pop in here and you guys will get to meet them here in just, just a little bit. Um, going through the band handbook a little bit more, here's a list of some supplies that you'll need depending on the instrument um, that, you, that you choose. So each instrument has supplies that go along with it um, that you need to keep stocked up and keep, keep in the case with the instrument. So here's a list of the items. And then all of these can be purchased at a local music store such as Bertrand's Music. And I have a link to their website where you can buy some of these accessories directly from them. So if you play flute, you'll want to keep a polishing cloth and a swab. Clarinets and saxophones, you'll want to keep a stock of reeds, okay? So reeds, is, it's a, something that you use to play on the instrument. You'll need to keep, uh, keep those in your case. Court grease and a neck strap. And if you rent through Bertrand's, this stuff, a lot of this stuff will come in your case, I believe. Um, but you'll go through reads every few weeks, so you'll have to keep uh, purchasing those and, and uh, keep those stocked up. Trumpets and baritones, you'll want to have valve oil, okay, and tuning slide grease. Trombones, if you decide to play that, you'll need some uh, slide lubricant and tuning slide grease. Percussion, you'll need sticks and a practice drum pad, okay. Now here's a list of some rehearsal materials. Um, your instrument, obviously you'll need that. And then method book, um, I have this as a PDF that I can distribute to everybody. I can just send you the PDF of that. Um, or you can buy uh, the actual book. So that way you can write in the book. It's a lot easier um, to do it that way, to make notes to yourself when you're learning pieces uh, of music in the book. So I would recommend getting the physical copy of the book. Um, that way you can you can write in it. But if not, I do have PDF versions of these that, uh, that I can give you guys. Um, sheet music, I'll distribute that electronically. So again, I'll send, you sheet, I'll send you PDFs of any of the sheet music that we're playing. Make sure you have a pencil so that you can write on this stuff. Okay, so group lessons and ensemble rehearsals. So every Wednesday, students will participate in a one-hour group lesson with their sections. Uh, the group lessons will take place after school on Wednesdays between 1 p.m. and 4 p.m., right? So you're going to have a one hour slot within that time period. So for example, flutes might meet from one o'clock to two o'clock and uh, clarinets might meet from two o'clock to three o'clock. Saxophones might be three o'clock to four o'clock. Okay. So you'll get a one hour block in that time period on uh, Wednesdays. Um, so the schedule is still to be determined. I haven't figured out exactly what time each group is going to meet. Um, but you'll you'll get a rehearsal schedule after you fill out our band registration form after you register for band. Um, so here's a list of our coaches I already talked about for woodwinds, Mr. Padrell, percussions, Mr. Yakub. And then if you're familiar with Mr. Diaz, um, he's actually a phenomenal trumpet player. So occasionally he'll come in and help us out with brass. Um, attendance, it's important that each student's aware of their commitment to the band. It makes it a point to be at each group lesson, okay? So the more you're at these group lessons, the better you're going to play. If you're missing a lot of these, chances are um, you're, you're going to have a hard time uh, actually being able to play the music. So it's important that you make it to all of these. Students who miss more than three rehearsals will not be eligible to perform in any concerts. Okay, so those are just a couple things. Um, Acquiring an instrument and supplies. I'm going to have Bertrands talk a little bit about their rental program, but basically um, you'll have to rent an instrument. Uh, I have a few extra instruments at the school um, that I can lend out if you're not able to rent an instrument for any reason. We want to keep this open so that anybody has the opportunity to join. Um, but I only have a very limited number of instruments. So um, I'm going to pass it over to them to talk about this in, in just a few, but first I'd like to give a demonstration on all the instruments and give you guys an idea of what instruments we, uh, we offer. And so you can check it out and see which one you would like to play. 
Um, so I'll start here with, I'm gonna start with the trumpet, okay? The trumpet is a member of the brass family, okay? All of the, all of the brass instruments use a mouthpiece that looks something like this, okay? Or something like this is probably more realistic. This is what you're gonna see, okay? And in order to make a sound on this instrument, what you have to do is buzz your lips together like this. Okay, so if you can do that, you've already got the first step down. Then the next step is to be able to buzz into this mouthpiece like that. And if you can do that, all it takes is to put it onto the instrument like this. So, trumpet, super cool instrument, is responsible for playing a lot of the melody parts in the band, okay? <clears throat> so, a lot of responsibility with this instrument because it, it carries the tune of, of, of a lot of the pieces that we play in band. Um, it uses three valves to change notes, and a lot of the notes are going to be changed just by moving your lips. So, I'll give you an example of that. So, I played a bunch of different notes just using my lips. And then if I use that in combination with pressing down these valves, I can get even more notes. All right, cool. So here's the trumpet. Um, I'm going to move on to some more brass instruments. The next one I want to show you is this guy here. This is called the baritone. All right. Baritone, just like the trumpet, uses <clears throat> buzzing to make a sound on the mouthpiece. So this is what a baritone mouthpiece looks like. You'll notice it is a lot bigger than a trumpet mouthpiece because the instrument is much bigger. So for this instrument, you'll buzz into the mouthpiece to get a sound. Once you put that onto the instrument, so you'll notice that this instrument plays quite a bit lower than the trumpet so it also uses valves the same way and you change notes using your lips and and the valves but this instrument sounds a lot lower so the baritone is going to be responsible for playing a lot of the bass lines and the lower notes that are in the band so it can go pretty pretty low demonstration of the baritone. Um, pretty cool instrument, really nice sound on this one, really nice deep low sound. Um, if you like uh, the sound of, of lower instruments, this might be the one for you. Um, the next one I'm gonna move over to is the trombone, which I'm gonna have to stand for this one because the trombone has a slide on it. So I need a little bit more room to play this one. but. Also a member of the brass family, just like the trumpet and the baritone, the trombone uses actually the same, the same mouthpiece that the baritone uses. It's the same, about the same size. And it's the same thing to make a, a sound on this. And then when I put it onto the instrument, now the difference with this instrument is instead of having valves or keys, this one uses a slide to change the notes. So that's kind of a, <laughs> that sounds a little bit silly, but if I get these slide positions in exact places, and this is also 
um, a lower pitched instrument just like the baritone. So this is going to play the lower parts in the band. So super cool instrument. This one has a lot of flexibility and a lot of cool um, effects that you can do with the slide. Again, this one is going to play the lower notes and some of the bass lines that we have in the uh, in the band. So super fun one. Um, so those are all of our brass instruments. So just a quick recap, the brass instruments all use a cup style mouthpiece like this. And in order to make a sound on these, we have to buzz our lips. Okay, so if you would like to try out a brass instrument, I, I would suggest try to practice just getting a good lip buzz by trying to make that sound. And then once you end up getting an instrument and you have the mouthpiece, that's the next step put it on the horn and then you're you're all set off off you go all right so now we're going to move over to our woodwind instruments okay so the next one i'm going to show you is the flute okay now the woodwind instruments uh you might notice this isn't actually made of wood this is this one's made of silver um but woodwind instruments uh originally would have been made of, of wood. So that's where they get the name. And we use wind to make the sound on them, right? Um, now, the way we play this is there's a little hole at the end of the flute that we blow across. And that's how we get our sound, right? And it's a lot like, I don't know if any of you have ever tried this, but if you have like a soda bottle or something like that, and you try blowing across it, I don't have a soda bottle. I only have this water bottle here, so, but. If you want to try this out, if you if you have a soda bottle laying around, you can try to blow across the hole at the top and get a sound out of it. Um, and if you can do that, then you'll be able to make a sound on the flute. But anyway, what you do is you blow across the hole at the top. And the way you change notes on this instrument is by pressing down all of these different keys on here, right? So you blow across and then you press, press down keys and lift up keys to change the notes. Now the flutes are responsible for pl also playing a lot of the melodies just like the trumpets are. And the flute, when you get into upper level flute playing, a lot of times flutes will have really fast um, passages. <laughs> So this is the flute, very beautiful sounding instrument. Um, and this one is, like I said, is, is gonna be responsible for playing a lot of the melodies in the band. Um, and you'll notice that this one is in a, a higher pitched register um, from like the trombone and the baritone. All right, so there's the flute. Next one I'm, I'm gonna move over to here is the clarinet, okay. Clarinet, you might recognize this one if you watch SpongeBob. This is the instrument that <laughs> Squidward played. Um, but this is um, this is also a woodwind instrument, just like the flute is. Um, but you'll notice it, it looks a little bit different, and, and you make a uh, sound on this one quite a different way. So this instrument uses. I was talking before about reeds. So this instrument also uses a reed, and what a reed is is a piece of wood very thin piece of wood that goes on the end of the mouthpiece. And when you blow across, or when you blow into this, the reed vibrates and that's what makes the sound on this instrument. So I'll give you an example. And just like the flute, the way you change notes on this is by pushing down different keys and covering over the holes, right? So the more holes you cover, the lower the instrument plays, the less holes that are covered, the higher the instrument plays. So the clarinet's unique, it can play very low, 
but he can also play really high. So I'll show you some some low notes. <laughs> So that's some low playing. I don't know if I got that entirely correct. I'm doing it from <laughs> the top of my head. So that's some, some of the lower register of the clarinet. It can also play really high. All right. So really unique instrument in the fact that it can play so low and also play so high. Um, the clarinet um, also would, would take a good uh, deal of the melodies in the band music. And it also plays a, su a supporting role by holding down a lot of the harmonies that we have in our band music. So super cool instrument again. Um, if you're interested in this one, yeah, check it out. So there's the clarinet. Um, and next one I'm gonna show you is the saxophone, alto saxophone. This is the one that I started out on. Now, this one is also a part of the woodwind family. And you might be thinking, okay, that looks like it's made out of brass, like a trumpet, right? How is that part of the woodwind family? Well, it is because we're using wind to play it. And this one, just like the clarinet, uses a reed on the end. And this is how we make our sound, just like the clarinet, very similar um, mouthpiece where we have a reed that makes our sound on this one. All right, now the saxophone comes in a lot of different sizes. This is an alto saxophone. This is the one that we're, uh, that we're offering for a beginner band. But there's also a tenor saxophone, a baritone saxophone, a bass saxophone, a contrabass saxophone. And if you go even higher, there's a soprano saxophone, a soprillo saxophone, sopranino saxophone. So there's a huge family of saxophones in, in different sizes that you can play. Uh, but I'll give you an example of what this one sounds like. So that's a little bit of classical saxophone, but there's also, uh, you, you, I'm sure you've heard the saxophone played in a style of music called jazz music. So that's another uh, very popular style of music that the saxophone plays in. So I'll play a little bit, if I can remember off the top of my head. Uh... So there's a lot of cool stuff you can do with the saxophone. Um, just like the clarinet and the flute, the way you change notes is by pushing down the different keys and the different buttons on it. That's what changes the notes, okay? So I've gone over all of the brass instruments. So we had trumpet, trombone, baritone. I've gone over all of the woodwind instruments, flute, clarinet, and saxophone. The only one I have left to go over um, is percussion. And uh, hopefully this isn't too loud. I'm going to try to try not to play this too loud. But in the percussion family, these are instruments that we would use a stick to play, right? So anything that we would beat, hit, or strike would be in the percussion section. So typically in your percussion section, you'll have what's called the snare drum, the bass drum. You'll have uh, cymbals, and you'll have mallet instruments like uh, the bells or the glockenspiel or the marimba. Um, I don't have a uh, marimba to show you. I wish I did, but uh, I don't I don't currently have one at my house and I don't even have a glockenspiel, which I also wish I did. But I have a snare drum here. So I'll give you an example. Um, so just so you can see, this is uh, this is the snare drum here that I'm going to be playing. It's going to be a little bit off to the side. So I don't know if you'll be able to see it. And just to save your ears, I'm going to cover this with a pillowcase <laughs> so that it's not too loud but I'll show you a little bit of what the snare drum sounds like All right, so <laughs> that's a little bit of percussion demo. So for percussion, you would play snare drum, bass drum, um, bells or cymbals, and 
when I pass it over to Bertrands, they can talk to you a little bit about the um, the percussion kits that you can rent and the different options that you have there for, for what instruments you want in your kit. Um, but uh, before I do that, I want to introduce uh, somebody to you. Uh, Mr. Paldrell has joined us. Um, so Mr. Paldrell is, is going to help coach our woodwinds and a little bit of our brass. Uh, so I'll let him introduce himself. Hi there, everyone. Uh, so yeah, uh, my name is Mr. Powdrell, um, and I'm an SDSU graduate in music education. Uh, just graduated this past May. Uh, like Mr. Klein, uh, I'm also a saxophone and a reed player. Uh, so yeah, flute, clarinet, saxophone. Um, I also play the other band instruments as well. Um, so yeah, and uh, outside of that, uh, I make surfboards. I work at the Mission Bay Aquatic Center, and uh, yeah. So. All right. So yeah, if, if you uh, if you choose any of the woodwind instruments, you'll definitely be working with myself as long as well as Mr. Paldrell. And also we'll probably um, both be teaching a little bit of the brass uh, this year too. So uh, you'll be spending plenty of time with us. Um, okay, so I think now's a good time to pass it over to Bertrands and, and they're going to talk to you about um, renting an instrument and so basically everybody's got to get an instrument right in order to be a part of the band program so there's a couple options that you have if you maybe you already own one you could purchase an instrument or maybe you already have one if you maybe you got a family member that you know that has an old instrument in the closet that they're willing to let you borrow um, you could do that if you do that option I would recommend taking that instrument in to get serviced and get fixed up and make sure it's ready to play um, or rent an instrument and that is going to be the best option in my opinion for everybody uh to to take advantage of um so without further ado i'm going to pass it over to jeff bertrand and he's going to talk to you a little bit about the rental process all right thank you um i'll try and be quick and brief um so you guys can get on with uh, the rest of your evening um <clears throat> a couple things first i'm going to see if this screen share will work oh it's disabled can you enable oh. screen sharing for me? Yep. And there you go. Who can start sharing? Cool. Yep. You should be good to go. Sorry about that. All right. Let's see if I can do this. Okay. Hopefully this will work. All right. Perfect. Hopefully you can see this flyer that is up on the screen. Dave, mm -hmm. can you give me a nod if the flyer is up? Okay. Perfect. All right, so um, you'll probably get something like this either sent to you if you have not seen it already. Um, this will talk about um, the easiest way to rent. You can go to this um, specific website designed for Albert Einstein, or you can scan this code. This has our pricing, um, the options on there for the instruments. Uh, all of our rent um, applies towards a purchase of a new instrument. So that's one of the nice things about renting is if and when you decide to buy, you can take that rent towards purchase of a new instrument. Um, a good, the other nice thing about our instruments is they're all good quality major manufacturer instruments that will last students several years. So as an example, a good quality flute, clarinet, trumpet, or trombone is going to start around $1,000, and that is for a beginner instrument saxophone and baritone are closer to 1500 the combo kit's probably closer to five or six hundred so there are lots of instruments out to be there to be found today um, you really want to stick if you're going to go on your own with one of the major manufacturers like yamaha con selmer jupiter are pretty much three of the that pretty much run the gamut of all the instruments today um, uh, so definitely consider that. We also include our uh, peace of mind maintenance, which covers theft, damage, or any normal wear and tear. So if anything were to happen to the instrument during uh, while you're renting it, um, with the maintenance, you're completely covered. You pay nothing for the repair or the replacement. Um, so that's an additional $6 a month as, as an example for the clarinet, flute, trumpet, or trombone. Uh, another thing I want to show you real quick here, if I can get to it. Screen is in the way. I hate when it does that to me. Uh, here is the link for the Albert Einstein Charter. This is where you'll end up um, going. Uh, if you go to that link or scan that code, you just click Rent Now, um, and you'll be good to go. If you 
already have an instrument and you just need to purchase supplies, um, you can just purchase the supplies as an option. Additionally, I'm really trying to get these on the screen. Okay, perfect. <clears throat> this is our virtual band blast off. Um, I'm going to throw all of these links into the chat, but I'll also email these links to uh, Mr. Klein so that he can just forward them on to you. Um, it's pretty easy to get to this page, but this is essentially going to do what you just saw. So there is a seven minute video that goes through every instrument, and then there's a more detailed video that will do trumpet, trombone, flute, clarinet, saxophone, and violin. Unfortunately, we don't have the baritone for the percussion on here, but the other ones will give you a good example. So if you weren't sure or that demo wasn't long enough, um, go to our um, virtual petting zoo and um, you'll be able to uh, figure that, re-look at those videos. So the other way you can do this is simply to go to our website, birdtransmusic.com. You scroll down, you'll see virtual instrument tryout. The second, the, the way to get to the um, link by rental for the school is to scroll down and go to shop by school. And then you would click San Diego. And then you would click Albert Einstein. And it takes you to that same spot where you can rent. But again, if you just scan that code or go to that direct link, which is uh, on the web, on the flyer, you would be good to go. Additionally, we do have the supplies lined up with the rental. So when you do the rental, there's an option to pick your supplies. Um, that will give you all the supplies that they're asking for. In addition to that, it's going to have a music stand for at home practice. Um, music stands are crucial for practice, especially now in a virtual environment. You've got to have something to prop up your music so that you can have good posture. So we're including that um, in the su supply package. That's a one time purchase. It gives you everything you need, and those supplies will last you all year. Um, we're including 10 reads because we know in a virtual setting, you're going to need more reads to get started. So you'll have a box of 10 reads in that kit as well. Uh, okay. The last thing I want to talk about is our um, free lessons. So we're giving four free virtual lessons with uh, any rental. Actually, we're going to give this to anyone at Albert Einstein. So if you're a beginner, you can, um, um, this is going to be the link which you'll, you'll get to sign up for it. This will give you the first month of this plan free. And then um, at, after you rent, you'll go to a page like this, which will have this. <laughs> Okay, enough of that. So that'll give you a chance to get additional support at basically additional lessons. It's really going to kind of go along with what you're learning in school, but it's a little bit of a longer recorded virtual lesson, and it will really help you get over that first hump. Um, in the beginning, the first hurdle is is really just getting those notes out, getting your instrument together, um, and then once you get over those hurdles, it just becomes so much more fun. So as much support as we can give you as an organization um, to make sure your student or your child has the best experience. Um, so I think those were the things. Oh, the last thing is with the rental. Um, if you rent from us, we're going to arrange delivery. And I believe what we're going to do is we're going to deliver the instruments to the school and Mr. Klein is going to distribute them. Is that correct? Yeah, we'll have them at the school and then the students will come to the school whenever they can get there and, and just come up and, and pick them up from the school. Perfect. So, so we'll, we'll set up a time. So you won't have to um, come to our location. You're more than welcome to come to our location. We're lo located in Rancho Penasquitos. Um, we have great uh, employees. They're all musicians. Um, they can answer lots of questions for you. They can show you the instruments um, and again, answer any additional questions you might have. Um, but you can also just simply do the reservation online. We'll process the rental. We'll bring it um, to the school. 
and then they'll make sure it gets distributed. So I think that is all I had. Awesome. Yeah, thank you so much. Um, so uh, for everybody that's still here in the meeting, um, just a few things now, if you, so here's a couple of things. This is the, basically the checklist if you want to sign up for band. So basically the, the first thing you got to do is pick what instrument you want to play. So um, I just did that little demo for you. Hopefully that gave you kind of an idea of, of which, which voice is yours, which instrument you want to, uh, you want to have. Um, and the, uh, so once you decide what instrument you're going to play, the next thing you're going to want to do is um, read through our band handbook, which I will be sending out. Everybody that's in this meeting right now is going to get a follow-up email tomorrow with all of the links that, that we're all talking about. So any, any of the, the band handbook is going to be included in that. Um, so read through the band handbook. And then I'll be sending you a registration form to register for band. So once you've read through the handbook, you've picked your instrument, you can go ahead and, and register for band. And then you need to uh, acquire an instrument. So that's where you need to go onto Bertrands and, and rent your instrument through there. Um, once you've done all of that stuff, just keep an eye out. I'll be emailing you and letting you know um, when your instrument has arrived at the school and what time your lesson is going to be on Wednesdays. We're going to start on Wednesday, October, I believe, the Wednesday, October 14th is going to be our first day of band. So um, you need to make sure that you have all of this stuff filled out. The, the registration needs to be filled out by next Wednesday, October 7th. That way, Bertrands will have enough time to get in their instruments out to you. Um, and I'll have enough time to come up with a schedule. So uh, October 7th, have your stuff, your instrument rented and your registration filled out. And then we will start band the following Wednesday on the 14th. So, all right, everybody, uh, thanks for joining us. And like I said, shoot me an email if you have uh, any questions and, and I, I'm happy to answer them. Um, but all right, we'll see you around. Thank you. Thanks guys.